Hey, Skyler, good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. It's been a while. Yeah, it has. Well, welcome back to the chair. Um, hey, what was the hardest thing about having to sit out all those games? Um, there were there was a lot of things that were challenging and hard, but I would say what the hardest thing for me was just standing there and, and um, not being able to participate, especially when we were um, kind of up against it and struggling there at times. Um, just standing up in the box and and watching and not being able to do anything about it. I think that is what what really hurt me the most. Um, and then getting into the locker room after the games and seeing the the hurt in my my teammates' eyes and in my coaches and and all that stuff and just not being not being able to contribute or um, you know be able to make a difference and uh, you know that that was very challenging and unfortunately that was what it was like for about six weeks in a row so um, it, it was very challenging and tough but um, I truly believe that me getting that experience and getting to see that from a from the perspective that I did um, is going to uh, benefit me in the future. Can you tell us uh, any details about the injury you are recovering from and how's the rehab process going? Yeah, well, um, you know, I'm not going to get into details of what actually happened, but it, um, it the recovery process has been going great. I mean, since I've since I've gotten surgery, I mean, it's been going really smooth. Um, from what I know, I mean, I've never really experienced a, an injury or a surgery like this before. Um, so it was all obviously new, but, um, you know, I just treated every, every day in my rehab, like, like it was game day, you know, that, that was my, my game day, five days a week. And that's, that's the way I approached it. That was my mindset. And, you know, at first it was just trying to get my range of motion back and, so each day I was just focused, you know, I'm going to get one degree further in my, my range of motion today, or, you know, this, this movement, I'm going to, I'm going to go up one, one pound than I did yesterday. And that, that was my, that was my approach. That's been my mindset this entire time um, for rehab. And I just got clear to start throwing last week. So I started off with a Nerf ball, um, throwing that thing around. And then I moved on to a junior peewee size football. So I'll, a little, littler football that had a little bit more weight to it. Um, and then this week I moved on to, to our football and, and it's been, it's been going really great. I mean, the best way to describe it uh, for me, just being a basketball player uh, at heart and growing up, it just felt like it felt as, as if I did um, like in high school and, and whatnot, when I went through an entire football season and then got thrown into basketball practice and asked to, go pick up a basketball for the first time and, and dribble it and everything, you know, it just, it just felt kind of weird and felt awkward um, at first. But uh, today was, today was um, my third day throwing in my progression and thought today was my best day. Uh, it's obviously, it's, it's a slow process getting back into it, but um, I just try to focus on every single rep and, and making sure my mechanics are sound and I'm not compensating and I'm getting a good weight transfer and, and doing all the things that I've done in the past and not building any bad habits through this process. And as you think ahead to your, you know, your final season here, what, what will, what would, de I'm struggling for the word here, but what do you think you need to do to make, to go out with a bang and finish things the way you want? Yeah, well, I don't think there's anything necessarily that I need to do or have to do. Um, but I, I'm just looking forward to getting out there and, and getting to play this game again. And obviously um, it's not what I planned uh, to be back here for, for a sixth year. Um, but also I didn't plan for COVID to happen. I didn't plan for me to get hurt. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of unexpected things that got thrown at me. Um, but I'll, I know at heart that um, everything happened for a reason and, and it's part of the plan. And I trust in that with all my heart and, um, I'm going to embrace this opportunity and I'm going to do my best to, to make sure that I'm doing everything I need to do to prepare myself uh, for the best season that I could possibly have. And while doing that, um, you know, being, being a great leader, being a great teammate and, and helping my teammates grow around me and 
uh, you know, cause I'm, I'm the old head in the locker room now. And, uh, you know, I was just talking to Khalid Duke today and he was just talking about how he was born in 2002. I was sitting there like, I was in kindergarten when you were born <laughs> and, um, you know, just having that, that, uh, that age differential, uh, being able to mentor guys, being able to, to use the, the things that I've gone through and experienced here uh, to influence them and, and make them better. And um, that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I'm, I'm going to invest uh, in doing this, this off season and going into the next year. All right. Well, thinking back to 2002 makes me feel really old, but Hey, thanks. Thanks for your answers. <laughs> John. Yes, Kyler, take me back to, um, you know, the hit when it happened and what the moment was like when you found out you were going to be out for the rest of the year. Yeah, so, um, so obviously I, I got hit and as I was laying to the ground, I just had my, had my arm in kind of a weird situation, a uh, weird angle, trying to brace myself a little bit as I was going to the ground. And uh, in the moment uh, when I got hit and was on the ground, I didn't, didn't feel anything weird happen to be honest. Uh, but I got up and tried to move my arm to, to look at my wristband on my, on my wrist to, to get the next play. And my whole arm was just numb and stinging and felt like I was just getting stabbed, honestly. And I've never been stabbed before, so I don't know exactly what that feels like, but that's if I had to, to give it a, um, gander for what it felt like that, that would be it. Um, and so I knew something wasn't good. Um, and uh, I just heard the coaches. Um, obviously, I, I was getting up and I was getting ready for the next play. And I just heard the coaches telling me to, to get down so they could get another player in. And so I got down. Um, and um, I just remember, honestly, just in the moment, I was in, in shock and in and, and a lot of pain. And I just remember Coach Kleiman, I just opened my eyes and and Coach Klein was standing over top of me or sitting over top of me and he grabbed my hand and just told me that he loved me and that it's gonna be okay. And um and I looked over and saw my my teammate Briley um praying over top of me. And in that moment I was um obviously a lot of things going through my head and and whatnot, but you know, I didn't want to overreact because I didn't know exactly what had happened. And I got in the locker room and went through all the um the things they wanted me to go through and nothing was broken. And so they were just doing some, some tests on me, trying to test my strength in my arm and doing some movements and stuff. And I could do a little bit. Um, and they put a ball in my hand um, to, to see if I could grip it and, and throw it. And I couldn't even wrap my fingers around the ball. So in that moment, I knew something bad had happened, uh, but I just obviously didn't know. Um, and the next day I was able to get in, get an MRI and get my results back. And um, the doctor informed me what had happened and told me, you know, we just talked about my future, talked about what I, what I want to do in the future and what is the best thing for me to do right now uh, in order to protect my, my future and myself. So uh, the best option was to get surgery right away. And, um, you know, obviously I was very emotional at first um, my family was here because they were, they were at the, the Texas Tech game. And so I was able to, you know, have them around. My dad stayed a couple of days with me, uh, just to spend time with me and, um, you know, make sure I was doing okay. And, you know, it definitely was hard at first, but I think the, the hardest part was that week before I had had surgery, just sitting there, I felt stagnant um, and just had, so much time on my hands just to think about everything. And um, it definitely troubled me of, of why, why this happened, why now? Uh, but, you know, it came to the point where it was like, I got to get back on the saddle and, and go to work. And I'm not going to let something like this um, define my future. And if anything, it's going to, it's just going to add to my story. And so whenever I got surgery, that, that was really the big turning point. Cause you know, now I'm, I'm fixed and I can start getting healthy. And so, like I said earlier, just focusing on one day at a time, not getting ahead of myself, not getting frustrated if I had a, a tough day or uh, my, my rehab didn't go as well as I thought it would, um, but just embracing and all those feelings, all those emotions and um, treating every every day like, like it was game day, because um, that's what it was to me. 
when it <clears throat> came time to to decide if you were going to come back this year or not? I know Coach Kleiman mentioned the other day a part of it was not being able to have a pro day and what that would mean for an NFL future for you. W was it more that? Was it more about legacy at K-State? I guess how would you break down what all went into that decision to come back? Uh, so so both of those were were a big big part of my decision to come back. Um, first and foremost, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty competitive kid and, um, and I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to go out like that. And um, I just feel like I still have a lot of good football uh, in my tank and can still improve, still, still get better. I, I don't feel like I've reached my full potential and, and especially you know, after the Oklahoma game, I just felt like I was really starting to to get in a groove and and was playing good football. And sure enough, that's that's when everything happened. And it seems like that's always how it does. You know, when I feel like you got things figured out, you know, that's when uh, things turn sideways a little bit. So, um, you know, the, and that's what Coach Kleiman on one of our first phone calls, uh, kind of talking about coming back. You know, he. He expressed that to me. He's like, I know this isn't the way you want to go out, and I know the type of person and player you are, and um, we want to have you back if 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 you want to. And and obviously, I'd put a lot of lot of thought into it, uh, a lot of thought about my future as well. You know, it's always been my dream to play at the next level, and um, I believe I I need um, some more film, um, especially in this offense. And so it, it was a pretty easy decision uh, for me. The biggest thing for me was where if the coach is going to be accepting um, accepting me back and uh, welcome me back with open, open arms. I was the thing I was most worried about because um, I didn't want to I didn't want to enter the transfer portal. I didn't want to go anywhere else. I did not want to play at any other university than than here. And so whenever uh, Coach Kleinman expressed that to me, Coach Klein did Messingham all the coaches, um, I was super excited and it made my decision really, really easy. Appreciate it, Skyler. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. Derek. Yeah, Skyler, we kind of saw the video when, when right after you, uh, with the change of the number to number seven and talked about a legacy. What do you want your legacy at Kansas State to be? Um, you know, for me, for me and my legacy here, um, you know, I, I just, I don't, I want to be remembered as a, as a person, a player that, that impacted every single person he touched um, throughout the years he was here. And whenever um, adversity hit that he persevered in and found a way to, to make a, a bad situation um, a great situation, and uh, obviously I want to want to win games and I want to do all those things. But for me, it, it's more so just the impact of of people around me and and making people better around me and and helping guys see their their full potential uh, in themselves by the way that I lead, uh, the way that I play, um, and and ultimately that that is that is how I want to be remembered. And I know all the the wins and and all, all the stats, all that type of stuff is icing on the cake really. But for me that that's not necessarily the most important thing for me for, for my legacy and how I want to be remembered here. Yeah, some of the wide receiver room looks a little bit different than the last time you were the quarterback. Boy King Gill's not here, for example. Who are some of the guys you really feel like you're going to be able to count on this season or some newer faces that we may not have seen that you envision being somebody you can count on? Yeah, well, I'm really excited about uh, our receiver room and um, our tight ends, really all of our skill positions. And I mean, every position on offense, we got our whole o line coming back and there's just a lot of, a lot of, positive and encouraging things to, to look forward to. But um, obviously Malik Knowles, uh, you watch his his past, his last three games, really felt like he was starting to get in a groove and getting confidence and 
and, and playing like uh, we all know he can play. And so having an off season with, with that confidence, the way he finished um, excites me a lot. And him and I talked a lot over break uh, about just building a, a strong relationship and, and building that trust uh, where we're on the same page at all times. And, and just ultimately just trying to find ways to help our football team win games. Um, and then you sprinkle in uh, Philip Brooks, who's a guy that's been around for a while and I think has a, an exceptional um, skill set and does a lot of good things for us. So having him back and um, I'm really, really looking forward to, to seeing Jalen Travis. Uh, he redshirted last year and uh, was battling some, some injuries and throughout the year. So we didn't really get to see fully what, what he was capable of doing. Uh, but so far, uh, what I've seen um, this semester since we've been back has been very, very encouraging and has me excited to, to work with him. And then, then you throw in Deuce Vaughn and Keon Mosey. Um, I think Jacardi Wright. Um, we, I mean, obviously we've seen what Deuce Vaughn can do last year, but uh, I think him having a whole off season to, to make his body stronger and to learn our offense even more and, and those types of things is just going to make him better. And um, then our tight end group, adding, adding Daniel, um, I think is, is exciting. He's obviously a guy that has played, played some good football and has been on some successful teams. He's, he's won a Pac-12 championship. He's won a, won a Rose Bowl. Um, he's played with guys like Sam Darnold and, and Juju Smith. And so he, he's, he's been in those big moments and, has a lot of experience in that way that I think is going to really help our tight end room. Um, but in saying that, I, I mean, I think Sammy Wheeler and, and Connor Fox both uh, have a really bright future as well. And Connor Fox, uh, during our bowl prep week before we got shut down and had to cancel um, all that, he was doing a lot of good things and showing glimpses of a of, of promising future for helping us win football games. So, um, like I said, there's there's a lot of guys that – that I'm really excited to work with uh, this off season and build relationships with and build trust and um, ultimately just trying to find ways for, for us to contribute and help us win football games. And Daniel might be one of the few guys on the team that's older than you, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yes, he is. I'm, I give him a hard time about that too. Go last year to Ryan. Hey, Skyler, I uh, got, got a few things for you. And I guess first would be, you know, I know you can't really say anything for a certainty because I guess everything depends on if you hadn't got hurt, how how many games you could have played, how the season would have gone. But is it is it pretty close to a certainty that if you'd been able to play all or, or the majority of last fall that you wouldn't, you wouldn't be talking to us right now? Uh, um, probably. Um, I... I was really set on playing last year and and um, hopefully having a good season and, and putting enough on tape to where I could I could step out and and take my chance at the next level. Um, but you know, obviously that that didn't take place. So um, my uh, my plans changed a little bit. So and and that's okay. So I'm um, I'm excited to be back and. Excited to have another year, another crack at this thing. What was the biggest thing, Skylar, that you learned during that time that you were sidelined? I know that that uh, Coach Kleiman, Coach Messingham, they mentioned how big of an influence you were on Will and trying to help him through things. Just what? So, I mean, just what did you gain as a player by just that time watching the games from the sidelines? Were you able to just? And I think even Coach uh, Kleiman mentioned that you were up in the the booth some with Coach Klein, kind of. So, just tell me what, what at least did you learn from the time that you had to be out last season? Well, there, there were tons of things I learned, uh, too many to, to name them all off. But, um, you know, I, I have uh, an ambition of, of being a, a football coach someday at this level. And so getting to be up in the box and see the game from that perspective, being able to mentor, um, not mentor, but uh, tag along with uh, Coach Messingham and just his process of, of play calling um, and being able to track things for him and communicate and have open dialogue about what coverages we're seeing and blitzes and all that type of stuff. And just getting to see the game from that perspective is obviously something I've never experienced before. Um, but I, I truly think that it helped me learn 
uh, the ins and outs of things in the game just seems slower up there just because you can see things happen before they do. And I'm really looking forward to getting back on the field and just seeing how that translates over to, to being back on the field. Um, but also, I mean, so when we're in a press box, there's, um, you know, Coach Messingham, Coach Klanderman, offense and defense up there. So uh, I thought I, I, I learned a ton from Coach Klanderman in listening to how he called the game from a defensive perspective and the ways that he, um, you know, after after drives would talk about, okay, the, these couple plays are, are killing us. How, how are we going to, what, what, what coverage can we suit up for, for this formation and for this play to where we can fit it up better? And, um, you know, those types of things, how, how they make adjustments throughout a game as a defense. And, you know, obviously that just got my wheels turning um, as far as just thinking about, you know, how, how, how defenses, um, you know, D coordinators that, are, that we're playing against, how do they, how, how would they maybe um, switch up what they're doing or how, how would they defend what we're good at, you know, and being able to sit in their defensive staff meetings and listen to them game plan and the verbiage that they used um, was really, really uh, valuable to me. And so just getting to see the coaching side of things and seeing the game from their perspective and the why behind the what, um, I think really is something that uh, I'm going to take away that's going to benefit me in the future. You know, Scholar, we hear sometimes guys talk about like after losses or certain things that they – they like that. I don't go back and look at the film with your injury. Is that something where you've refused to watch it just because of a painful memory or obviously if you've just seen it because you saw a film review when you guys watched it after the game at some point? Uh, yeah. Uh, I went back and, and, and watched it because honestly it happened so quick. I didn't realize I was like, you know, how, how did this happen? And so I just, I went back and watched it. Uh, actually I want to say it was, uh, the game after I think it was we played KU uh, whenever I was really back around the team after I, I could um, from surgery. Uh, it was like before practice one day, I kind of just sat up there and and went through and 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 watched it. And, you know, I told myself I'm going to watch this one time and that's it. And and that 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 is, you know, uh, th that's the truth. So it was something that you know, I, I watched and embraced and and the time kind of smiled about it. And, you know, from there, I, as I walked out of the room, just put it, put it in the past, you know, it's, uh, it's not something that, you know, I'm going to, to carry on my back or add any weight on my shoulders or have a burden about it. You know, it's, it is what it is. And it happened for a reason. And, and I'm embracing, embracing that pain, that hurt, that frustration uh, to motivate me for the future. Well, Skylar, part of the reason I did ask about it was because, um, yeah, a lot of the fan base, when it happened, after the earlier injury that game to Alan Bowman on the Cleed Duke hit, there are a lot of people in the K-State fan base who felt like it was a dirty hit on you. Did did it seem like to you, after watching it or even seeing it, did it seem beyond like a normal football play? Or is that just like people who are fans, they, they just assume that anytime there's a big hit, sometimes there might be some ill intent? Yeah, well, I don't think he intentionally tried to hurt me uh, at all. Uh, and in that way, I do think that it was – just a football play, but I mean, he got, I mean, a targeting penalty and, and mm -hmm. got kicked out of the game. So I think that kind of speaks for itself, but um, in saying that, I mean, like I said, it, it's football and, and those types of things happen. And that's the risk that we take every time we step out in the field um, where we're risking a lot of things. So um, it definitely wasn't anything that like rubbed me the wrong way or that I've, I'm going to hold any grudges for, or, anything like that. Like I understand those things happen and um, I just happen to be on the wrong side of it. So, um, you know, that's, that's the way I looked at that. Well, last thing Skylar is that, that coach Kleiman said the thing that's impressed him the most so far about Jake is that, you know, sometimes you get guys who enroll early and they're just sitting here trying to go through the motions and learn things. But he said, he's been impressed that he's even kind of been willing to maybe call out older guys and really get on certain people, which he says is re very rare for a freshman. So what have, uh, what's impressed you about Jake since he's already joined you guys? Yeah, well, you can tell, you can tell Jake is, is focused and, and, and wants to be really good. Um, he's up there watching film. He's trying to learn as much as possible. Uh, he's, he's set in with, with film sessions with me and Will and 
you know, as asking me questions, asking Will questions, just trying to learn, you know, and I think at a, as a young player, that's, that's the best thing you can do is um, <clears throat> there's no such thing as a stupid question. And, and if, uh, if there's something that you don't understand to, to ask about it and get an answer. And he is, he's done that. And, you know, I've seen him, uh, him, him spin the ball a little bit at our seven on sevens and stuff. And he, it comes out of his hand really well. And so, um, you know, I, I think he has a potential to be a, be a really good football player. But um, in saying that, I mean, our whole quarterback room, I think, you know, Will, Will's been doing a great job at, at seven on seven and, and workouts and stuff too. I mean, he, he's been, been leading, you know, you can tell having that experience that he, he got last year has really, really paid off as far as uh, his, um, his comfort level, as far as having the confidence to, to lead guys and to call people out that are not doing the right thing. And when he's doing that, he set an example by, I mean, he, he's doing everything right. And, uh, and he, he works really hard. So I would say from top to bottom, our quarterback room is as deep as it's ever been since I've been here. And um, for that, I mean, for me is, is very, very promising and very encouraging um, for the future. And uh, competition makes everyone, everyone better. It's, it's going to raise everybody's play. And, you know, that, that's, that's what you want. I mean, that's what you want in, in our room because uh, we're um, a pretty important piece of this puzzle. And so, you know, it, it's been, it's been awesome. You know, I have a great relationship with all of them and, and especially will just from getting to spend so much time with him through the, through last year and getting to, uh, you know, help him through, through some things and, and teaching what I know um, him and I've have developed a really good relationship and that's carried over into this off season. As far as, you know, he, he's pushing me, you know, he's, he, you know, when, when we're going up against each other and, and conditioning, whatever the case may be, you know, he's, he's yelling at me to beat him and <clears throat> I'm doing the same thing and we're just having fun. We're having fun with it. You know, it, it's, we're all aware that there's one guy that's going to play, but we want this team to be successful and we want to win football games. And we know that our role in this team is to be great leaders and to influence our team um, around us to lift their level of play by the way that we show up and attack our work every single day. And, the, and that, that's what you want. And, and Coach Klein's done a great job of leading us in that way and, and making that very clear to us and, and making it very important. Okay, Scholar, I have one last fun question. Can you pronounce Daniel's last name or spell it without looking it up? Uh, pronounce I can pronounce it. I think it's Imorta Bebe. Um, but the spelling probably would fail at that. But it was actually it was funny. So when I got a hold of him for the first time, and um, you know, he sent me his name. He just his <laughs> last name instead of saying Imorta Bebe, he just said Bebe. Um, so, but yeah, that's. He has a has a challenging last name, but um, I'm excited to excited to work with the guy. He's he's an unbelievable unbelievable person, and you guys will really enjoy getting to talk to him whenever that time comes.